can uh, continue with our discussion on filters. We derived the general second order structure from which we can realize uh, as we have derived the uh, band pass and low pass transfer functions, right. Okay. So, this is the structure we have. What we have uh, are two integrators in a negative feedback loop. Okay. We showed that also this part effectively is uh, uh, like connecting, it is not an integrator but uh, it is like connecting an inductor between these two points. Okay. I am not claiming that this whole circuit behaves like an inductor, but if you look at the current that is injected here based on this voltage that looks like uh, the current from an inductor. Okay. So, with that it is very easy to see why let us see if this is V i, V 1 and V 2. why this is band pass right. You have a current V i by R flowing through this and that flows through this parallel resonant circuit and if a parallel resonant circuit has an impedance peak at resonance right. So, you get a maximum voltage magnitude at resonance and it drops off on either side of the resonance frequency. Okay. No, no, that is because uh, if you have an inductor L and let us say you connect voltages V 1 and V A and V B, the voltage across this will be V A minus V B. The current drawn from V A and the current that is pushed into V B will be the same and that will be equal to V A minus V B divided by S L, right. That is not the case here the current that comes here has 1 by s in it. The current that is drawn from B is not like that. Okay. So, this uh, what is inside this red box is really a two port network, right? it is not a, a reciprocal element. Are you familiar with reciprocity? Yeah, uh, it is not a bilateral element. Uh, you in a two terminal element, if you uh, connect two voltages on the two ends, the current taken from here and current going there is the same, but that is not the case the what is enclosed inside the box is I have some uh, 
v 1 being applied here and from this point I have some current being obtained there. So, it is really a two port network ok. So, it is not an inductor it is not a two terminal inductor we will see how to make the two terminal inductor lot of circuits were uh, cooked up to realize inductors without using a physical inductor using capacitors ok. Essentially all of them involve the same thing I mean uh, to if you want an inductor you need a current that is integral of the voltage ok. A capacitor gives you a voltage that is integral of the current. So, you have to go through a couple of voltage to current and current to voltage transformations to get this ok. We will see. So, V 1 is bandpass that is clear and also what happens when R q is infinite that is you let us say you forget to connect this R q what happens R q is infinite R q is an open circuit what happens to the resonance huh? yeah infinite gain basically it has infinite q right and if you recall the expression for q what was it R q by R. So, if R q is infinity q also will be infinity. So, if R q is uh, infinite you have two integrators in a feedback loop without any this thing is known as damping ok. So, this R q is what introduces damping is not it if R q is infinity there will be no damping in the circuit at all. So, two integrators will become an oscillator right this is just like the lossless L c resonance circuit when you connect L and c across each other you have this two integration operations ok. So, that is why you get the second order differential equation without the damping term. Now, with R q you do have the damping. So, this uh, is sometimes called the universal structure because you can get many transfer functions from this. It is not uh, very difficult to derive. what was V 2 by V i? What was the expression? Let me uh, I think I had called this R i as R by k right. So, I think that is what that is the notation I had used earlier k divided by hmm? plus S A R square. So, the natural frequency is 1 by C R the quality factor is R Q by R and damping factor if you want it is 1 by 2 Q ok. What is V 1 by V i? So, you know that clearly V 2 by V 1 is minus 1 by S A R ok. So, this will be ok. So, you get both band pass and uh, uh, low pass transfer functions from this and if I call this V 3 what will be V 3 by V i? The output of the third op amp right you could potentially use that as well. It says minus V 2 that is all. So, it is minus V 2 by V i ok. And if you sketch these transfer functions as a function of uh, frequency. the magnitude V 1 by V i will have a DC gain of k and assuming q is more than 1 by square root 2 it will have peaking like this. So, uh, 
at the resonance frequency what is the gain of V 1 by V i. So, when I say at resonance I mean essentially I mean that the second order term is cancelling with that right S i r square plus 1 is 0 that is resonance that is omega n. So, at omega n what is the gain? k no k times r q by r in this case you have a factor of q also coming in. So, you have k times q at this and I think earlier we worked out that the maximum gain is slightly higher than q, but for high q system it is almost the same as q ok. So, this is v 1 by v i and what is the ok. So, you start with some d c gain and if q happens to be more than uh, 1 over square root 2 you will have uh, peaking in the magnitude response right it will rise above 1 and at the uh, natural frequency of again it will be equal to uh, it will rise by a factor of q. So, it becomes k times q here of course, the way I have drawn the picture I have imagined a q much more than 1 ok. what will be the phase of the second order uh, transfer function V 1 by V i what will the phase look like what is the phase at very low frequencies huh? 0 ok and what is the phase at very high frequencies minus minus 180 and then at the natural frequency it will be minus pi by 2. So, it will do this and I think I also mentioned that how steeply it falls here depends on the quality factor ok. So, any questions? Yeah, sorry, this is V2 by V i, thanks. This is the low pass transfer function V2 by V i. And V1 by V i, what will that look like on this plot? It will start from 0, some very low magnitude here, and it will peak here, and it will do that. Very easy to see that it is band pass. And what will be the phase of this function? What is that? 0 to minus 90, why? What will be the phase at uh, very low frequencies? Hmm? Minus minus pi pi by 2 right you have minus s c r s gives you a phase of uh, plus 90 degrees minus s gives you minus 90 degrees and then after that we also know that v 2 by v 1 is what is v 2 by v 1 minus 1 by s c r right or v 1 is minus s c r times v 2 ok. So, from this you can get the phase of the v 1 is not it. What is phase of v 1? Phase of v 2 minus 
minus 90 degrees that is all phase of V 2 minus 90 degrees. So, it goes like that ok. So, it goes from minus pi by 2 to minus 3 pi by 2. Now, if we did not have this minus sign it would have uh, 0 at 0 phase at resonance ok. So, these are the band pass and low pass transfer functions you get from this and you can get the other transfer functions also uh, first I will list out uh, in general a low pass transfer function is of the form What will be the form of the high pass transfer function? What is it going to be? A square, right? So, clearly you will have these case can all be different. I am not saying this is what we implement, but this is the form that you need to have and a notch or a band stop. What will that be? I mean, what's what's left? What combination is missing here? One plus a square. So you'll have the same denominator. What happens is this uh, term. This is one at uh, low frequencies and something else at high frequencies, but at s equals omega n it becomes zero. Okay. So on this uh, same plot, if I plot them, this is what I would expect to see: the high pass would do that and the notch ok. So, all these have uh, different applications notch filter may be useful when uh, you know that there is a large interfering signal somewhere and you want to remove that because that is kind of very large and you have to block it before you process other signals. And there are many such situations sometimes that happens in radios and sometimes also this uh, the 50 hertz line frequency gets into everything. So, in many precision uh, measurement uh, circuits you will have a, a filter which will remove the 50 hertz part ok. So, that is why you might use a notch. Any questions of the on this uh, 3 op amp filter structure that we have discussed? Now, uh, so in this I mean I get band pass and uh, low pass responses, how do I get a high pass response? So, if let me call this now V i r and if I had a different input V i c and this was c i ok. So, these become it is assumed that uh, when V i by r is uh, something and V i c is 0 you get this transfer function right and the other one other transfer function is 
what will that be? So, this probably makes it easier right. So, you have to replace r by k with what 1 by S e i. So, this becomes and this I can write it as a square c square r square times c i by c ok. c i by c will be the gain the high frequency gain of the filter ok or I could just say c i equal to equals k times c then you would have a gain of k ok. What will v 2 be in that case? In this case band pass. So, if you apply the input through a resistor you get uh, low pass and band pass if you get a uh, if you apply the input through a capacitor you get band pass and high pass ok. Now, this you can do in other places also for instance I can apply the input through a capacitor here or another input here ok. And I could also apply yet another input here. Okay, so you can get uh, different transfer functions. You can calculate what you get. This is okay. So what do you expect to get if I? If I apply an input here, what function do you think V2 will be? What will be V1? Uh, you can calculate it later, but uh, and yeah, please do calculate it. But what do you think you will get? What do you think the denominator polynomial will be for the transfer functions? It won't change. It'll be the same. Okay. So now you have to guess the numerator. Yeah, it may be a little hard if you. Don't have experience, but uh, let's say, let's look at V1. Okay, I will apply an input here and then look at what V1 is. Can you tell what the DC gain is going to be from V i to R to V1? What happens at DC? Huh? Capacitor, capacitor current, sir, zero, right? Okay, so then. So, let us say this is also R just for the argument sake. The capacitor current is 0. So, what does it mean? Which uh, which node are you looking at? Which is the relevant node to focus? Yeah, eh? won't? No, I mean everything is a negative feedback, right? So what happens? What happens because of infinite gain in an op-amp circuit? Virtual short, yeah, isn't it? So which virtual short should we focus on now? OPA two. So what is this voltage here? Zero. So if this voltage has to be zero and no current is flowing here what should this be? 
Really? Yeah. Yeah, without negative feedback, it won't work at all. Of course, there is no local negative feedback, it is there through the other op amps. Yeah, so what is V1? Minus VI, okay. Is it fine? So, what I mean now if you had to guess like what will be the function V1 by V A to R? Minus hmm? 1? Yeah. So, it is a low pass transfer function, right. So, because the DC gain is 1, I just uh, I mean, because by from the DC gain being one, you can kind of guess what it's going to be. Actually, if you recall, when we were deriving the equations, we had to get uh, integrators with a negative sign. So we had two choices: like we could invert the sign of one equation or the other one. We chose one, and we got this. And when we did the other one, this is what we had got, right? We had to integrate the. I mean, if you think of this as the first op amp and this as the second op amp, that's the, it's the same circuit basically. In this case, what happens is V1 will be low pass, and V2 will be uh, band pass, okay, or some sort of band pass. It's not exactly. You can guess what it will be from uh, the transfer function v1 by v2 through this whole thing. You can guess. It'll have uh, band pass plus low pass combination, okay. Yeah. yeah. No. no. Minus one. Yeah. Yeah, it is possible, but I mean like I said I was kind of only guessing here. Uh, there are many things you can kind of use for intuition that is first I think you are convinced that the denominator polynomial will be the same, okay. And then you can see from V i to R to the output there is one integration here and two integrations, right. That is already a low pass type of response, right. So, that is why also another way you can guess that. I mean obviously by guesswork you cannot get the transfer function, you should verify, but I was just trying to uh, get an answer of at least what V1 by V A2 by V I2 R is at DC, okay. So, that that is correct, that is one, okay. So, similarly you can do stuff from here and if you want a notch response, what what do you need to do? What can you do? You have to get something of the form of 1 plus uh, ACR square, right. So, what is a possible way to do that? No, I mean forget the exact solution that you can find out later. You derive all these transfer functions, you will be able to see. But what might be the method? I need two terms in the numerator. So, what should I do? How will I get uh, two terms? Huh? How will I get it? You add something in parallel to R by K, such as I mean we are only playing with resistors and capacitors. So, if we add a capacitor, we will only get high pass. We want both add a low pass and high pass. How? Huh? Uh, which resistor and which capacitor? So, basically. The essentially, you have to apply input at two different places, okay. So, let us say from here to there it is uh, low pass, right, and I think you can find that if you have a capacitor here, will you get a high pass? Yeah, I think if you have a capacitor here, this you please check, but I am not uh, sure of this. 
you have a capacitor here you will get a high pass there and if you apply the input to both of these you will get the superposition of the two which can give you uh, notch ok. Yeah. What is that? Ah, that is a good question I mean I have been acting as though you apply this and nothing else changes right. So, the question is if I have this capacitor here right, if I have this capacitor will the original transfer function V 2 by V i r change or not. What is the answer? Will it change? That is obviously when you have multiple inputs you have to set one of them to 0 while evaluating the transfer function from the other. I have this capacitor to apply V i to C, but I set this voltage to 0 and evaluate the transfer function from V i r to the output ok. Will it be different from when this capacitor was not there? How much current? Eh? It is a virtual short right. So, this point is a virtual short. So, no current flows there and it does not affect it to a first order ok. Now, of course, the op amp is not ideal there will be a small voltage there. So, it will affect it to some extent, but it is a very small effect ok. As long as uh, the loop gains are high the virtual short is very good and uh, it would not affect anything yeah. No, no that is correct. Uh, you want to apply ah you mean you want to apply this and this, but this will give you a high pass at this node, this will give you a low pass at that node, you need the output at the same node. Okay. There are many ways of doing this or you can take two of the outputs and use like a fourth op, op amp to sum them and so on ok. But anyway this there are so many options that you can uh, apply inputs to multiple places and get some things and also uh, you can have other strange things like uh, you can have high pass, but with not 0 DC gain you would start from something else goes like that and goes that way and so on. In some places you may have that. So, you can get all of those things with this ok. So, this I think uh, should give you enough ideas of uh, if you ever have to make a filter if you take one of your LF 347 ICs it has 4 op amps you can use that to make this filter and you should be able to make any kind of filter any kind of second order transfer function with this ok. We will come to other types of filters which use fewer op amps, but uh, this is a very uh, popular and widely used thing ok. Any questions about filters any aspect of it? Now, you can also just as an exercise analyze it with all different values of R's and C's and see what you get ok. The functional forms will not be very different you will still have let us say from V i 1 R V 1 will be low pass V 1 will be band pass and V 2 will be low pass ok, but uh, the gains will be different ok. So, just try like uh, have uh, R 1 C 1 R 2 C 2 and something else there and you will see what happens ok. Any questions? Earlier I had said that uh, we will not worry too much about filter synthesis that is what kind of transfer functions we need to have uh, for high order filters. Uh, we will not again go too much into detail, but there is one particular thing that is quite uh, nice and easy to understand that we will look at. In fact, we have already seen that for the second order case right. We know that uh, let me assume uh, transfer function of the form ok. We know that depending on the quality factor the response can be like this like that or that way 
ok. So, what does this correspond to? Quality factor of 1 over square root 2 ok. Now, this kind of gives you the maximum bandwidth with the sharpest roll off afterwards right. This peaking thing can be a problem because it emphasizes these frequencies the other one is uh, does not have a sharp uh, transition band. I mean because after all what is the ideal filter? The ideal filter we wanted was like this right ok. So, all these three you kind of feel that the one that stays flat as far as possible and then starts dropping that is the best approximation to the ideal filter ok. Is this fine? So, what was uh, if I this is h of s what was special about q equals uh, 1 over square root of 2 uh, in uh, the absolute value of the magnitude square yeah how did that happen? What is the general form of uh, this? This is the denominator what is the general form or what is this I mean not the general form what is this for this particular filter? Huh? You just replace s by j omega and then I have taken the magnitude square. So, I will get the even order terms give you real parts right and the odd order terms give you the imaginary parts. So, the real part will be plus the due to the imaginary part you will have ok. This is fine. If I group uh, different terms together, I will have 1 ok. So, what is special about the 1 over square root 2 case? The middle term is 0 and that kind of makes sense. What happens is as you start from low frequencies, uh, at very low frequencies it will be 1. As you increase frequencies compared to omega n, as omega by omega n increases, this term starts coming into picture and this can go either way depending on whether uh, q is less than or greater than 1 over square root 2. So, the result of this is that it is very easy to see right. You will start with 1 if 1 by q square minus 2 is positive that is q is smaller than 1 over square root 2 it will start dropping the magnitude because this is in the denominator and if it is uh, negative it will start increasing. But if it is 0 it just stays that way stays at 1 and then this eventually pulls the magnitude down ok. So, we had discussed this if uh, this is equal to 0 this is known as the maximally flat magnitude response ok. Now, let us say I have an nth order low pass what will be the general form of uh, 
Edge of geometry square. Hmm? Order 2n and it will have only even terms, right? That is uh, true of all the magnitude responses. So, I will write this as uh, some some omega by omega n raised to 2 n and the coefficient of that could be some uh, c 2 n or something and then ok. Has only even order terms and it has an order 2n. Okay. Now, how will this behave in general at very low frequencies? This is the only term in that comes into picture. So, the magnitude will be 1 at very low frequencies, right? And after that, this comes into picture, and depending on whether this is positive or negative, it can uh, rise or droop, and the next one comes into picture, and so on. Okay. Now, if you want it to be as flat as possible, what should happen? Huh? All middle terms should be 0. Okay. This cannot be 0, if this is 0, it is not an nth order function at all. Okay. Sorry, actually, I should say this is the last one will be 1, that is how it is normalized. Okay. So, all these should be equal to 0 for maximally flat magnitude. There is a formal way to derive this. You can uh, differentiate uh, the magnitude square like n times and then you can set the maximum number of derivatives to 0, maximum number of uh, derivatives possible to 0. So, that will keep it as flat as possible. right? but uh, I mean that is too messy, but the result that you get will be exactly the same and this is more uh, intuitive and easy to understand. Okay. So, essentially to as high a frequency as possible, you keep the magnitude of 1 and after that the highest term which has to be there kicks in and it will, uh, uh, it will basically uh, behave like a low pass filter. Okay. So, an nth order maximally flat magnitude filter has a magnitude which is 1 by 1 plus omega by omega n to the 2 n. This is the magnitude square. Okay. What is the 3 dB bandwidth of uh, this filter? What is the 3 dB bandwidth? omega n for all of them. Okay. So, if you plot the magnitude responses, what happens is starts from 1. So, let us say this is 1 by square root 2, a second order 1 will probably do that, a third order 1 will do that, a fourth order 1 do that and so on. So, it becomes a better and better approximation to a brick wall filter. Okay. Is this fine? Any questions about this? What? Okay. So, how will we go about getting that? So, essentially this gives you the magnitude square function, right. What you want to find is the h of s uh, denominator polynomial d of s which will give you this. So, how will we do that? Is that possible you think? I mean that is what you are doubting obviously. Uh, it is actually possible because uh, so the c 2 to c 2 n minus 2 are some functions of a 1 to a n. right? So, 
you have as many equations as the number of unknowns to solve it. It is actually possible, but of course, to try to solve it like that, it's a painful thing to write it in terms of. Uh, yeah, only the highest power. No, no. I mean, actually, I wrote it in a probably a bad way. This uh, I didn't write omega in here, right? So maybe I should write it like this. A n can be absorbed into omega n. If A n is not 1, it simply means the omega n is not what you wrote uh, there, right. So, that is all. So, if I write S c r, omega n is 1 by c r, that is all. Is that fine? So, now the question is will we actually find the polynomial which will give us this function, ok. So, let us see. instead of keep writing 1 by uh, d every time I will operate on the denominator polynomial ok. This magnitude square which is obviously equal to is this fine. So, now what I want is is correct or not? I mean do you agree so far? I have not derived anything, I have just rewritten uh, that in terms of denominator that is all ok. <coughs> now, can you write this magnitude square in terms of d of s? What is the magnitude square? It is d of j omega and the conjugate of uh, the product of the uh, fun, uh, function and its conjugate, right? That is magnitude squared. Is that okay? Yes or no? Uh, that's fine. So now, what is g, d of j omega? It's basically d of s. Okay. Times how do you get uh, d star of j omega? I know, but what is it? Huh? Minus s. You put s equals uh, minus j omega, you would get the conjugate, is not it? Okay. So, instead of I mean normally we go from d of s and then substitute s equals j omega, I will go the other way, omega should be what? s by j right that is all. So, now I will say that d of s times d of minus s is ok is this fine. So, how do we can you solve for the roots of this? Please do that. Let me know what there. How many roots will be there? Two n. So, please find the roots and plot them on the complex plane. That means roughly. I think most of you have got the central idea. So, these are uh, essentially uh, 2 n roots of uh, minus 1 right and you also have this j. So, it is shifted by another pi by 2 ok. 
So, if you do it correctly, uh, so let us say let me do this. So, this is right, is this correct? Why? You mean, yeah. And J will give you another. So, S by omega 1 will become uh, exponential. So, this whole thing was inside. Is it okay? I think all the roots will lie on a circle of radius omega n. I think that everyone has recognized. And where will they be? Hmm? It will be everywhere, it will be in all four quadrants, is not it? 5 by 2 plus? Ah, yeah. So, you start with k equal to 0. So, for k equal to 0, where you get it the root? Here, right, somewhere. So, let me imagine that k is uh, sorry, n is uh, 4 or something, then the next one will be there, there, there. Okay. So, this is for n equals 4, and if you had uh, n equals 3, what would happen is you would have uh, something there something there, something there. Okay. For n equals 3, there will be one real root as there has to be obviously. Okay. This is fine. So, now what is this? These are the roots of d of s, d of minus s. So, how do I choose d of s? What should I do? Huh? Which one should I assign to d of s? These are, I mean, these things say that they are roots of d of s and d of minus s, and of course, they will all be symmetrical. So, for n equals 4, I have to choose 4 of them and then throw them into d of s. Which ones will I choose? Yeah, I mean, obviously, d of s will have, will uh, the roots of d of s should be in the left half plane, right. That is why you get a, I mean, that is when you get a stable filter. So, you pick the left half plane once. So, it is very easy. Now, there is the answer to your question. So, you draw a circle of uh, radius omega m in the left half plane and then distribute the poles equally and that is what is actually a pretty nice result. So, now uh, what you do, how do you realize the filter? So, let us say for uh, third order, you have to combine these two, realize this as a second order section using that op amp stuff and this alone is a first order thing. So, you cascade the two to get uh, the third order function. Similarly, for the fourth order case, you have to pair up uh, this pair of roots and that pair of roots and then uh, realize them using two of the second order type filters. Okay. So, once you know the roots, you know the q and everything, I assume you will be able to do that, right. You know the quality factor and all that stuff. Once you know the complex conjugate pair of uh, poles, you will know what the natural frequency of uh, all the pole pairs, what is that? It is omega n, because all the poles are in the same circle. So, the natural frequency of every pole pair is omega n, the quality factor will be different. So, the ones that are closer to the imaginary axis will have a higher quality factor, like this has a higher quality factor than that. Okay. Is this fine? So, this is actually a very nice result and this class of filters is known as uh, Butterworth filter after the person who first proposed it or analyzed it I guess. Okay.
So, this is easy to uh, derive that is why I mentioned this. So, this is how we would synthesize it and then uh, choose second order sections and first order sections for odd order uh, filters you will always have one first order section for even order stuff you will have only second order sections and you make a cascade ok. Any questions about any of this? And in this particular case the algebra is quite simple also. Uh, first we got the idea that for maximally flat magnitude in the expression for the magnitude square we should have only one and the highest order term all the middle one should be 0. So, that they would not be interfering in the uh, middle frequency range right you have one and then finally, it just drops off like a rock. So, that is how we want the magnitude to be ok. Once you have that it was quite easy to with a little bit of algebra to derive the location of the poles. What we derived was the location of d of s times d of minus s, but it is pretty obvious the, to realize a stable filter d of s should have all its roots in the left half plane. So, you pick the left half plane stuff to and assign them to d of s automatically d of minus s will have the opposite ones right the ones mirrored about the uh, yeah, ones I mean basically if uh, something is a root of d of s the negative of that will be root of d of minus s ok. Is this fine? Any questions here? So, one thing you notice is the higher the order ok. So, you will have more and more poles right if you have uh, very high order filter you will have poles distributed like this and there will be some pole pairs with very high quality factor ok. So, if you think about what is happening. Uh, you look at the cascade for a third order case there will be a first order term ok. Let me see let us say this is omega n and the 3 dB bandwidth of that will be omega n right for the first order it will be omega n. It will also have a second order term and it will have a q more than 1 over square root 2 ok that you can get from the positions of the poles ok because for third order case where will the poles be for q equals 1 over square root 2 where will the poles be do you know. In fact, you can you should have it at 45 degrees right. In fact, you can use the same Butterworth results uh, because q equals 1 over square root of 2 corresponds to a Butterworth filter of order 2. So, all you have to do is in the left half plane have only 2 poles distributed like this. Okay. For uh, third order you will have here, there and there. So, the quality factor of this is actually greater than 1 over square root 2. So, what happens is that I do not remember exactly how it looks like it will look something like that. Okay. The product of the two you can think of the second order speaking as compensating for the droop of the first order and you will get something like that ok. And if you have higher and higher order things the same thing will happen you will have uh, something like that something like that something like that the product of everything will uh, become flat ok. This is fine. Any questions about this? So, now there are other families of filters which we will not discuss like for instance it turns out that. So, in this case we tried to keep it as flat as possible right. Uh, there are other things where you let it vary a little bit in the pass band it turns out for the same order it can be steeper ok. And there are other uh, variants also instead of trying to keep it flat here you let it ripple and then you can also let it vary in the stop band and so on ok. So, we will not discuss any of those things, but if you are interested you can go and look at Chebyshev type 1 and type 2 filter types and what is known as an elliptic filter ok. So, the algebra involved is a lot more complicated, but uh, the motivation for all this was the following right. 
you want that brick wall filter ideally you would have liked that okay and you can't get that with any finite order filter so what people tried to do was to find better and better approximations and remember we are talking about now 1920s or 30s where computing power was simply not there now you could probably throw that brick wall stuff into a numerical optimizer and get some uh, get some approximation to it even if you don't know what it is as long as it fits that it should be fine but then i mean computing those things was quite hard so people spent time figuring out what are the best approximations to those and this is one of them whatever the chebyshev and those things are also better and also the point was to approximate it with the lowest order possible why is that an important thing fewest components right i mean even when you are making it with passive components you need to have the fewest finally everything is driven by economics so the fewer uh, l's and c's you use the lower cost it is and the better it is okay yeah yeah absolutely so there are many of those things also so okay so that's about filter synthesis and uh, how to get higher order transfer functions but like i said these uh, the tables of these poles or the coefficients will be i mean you can get them from matlab for certain types of filters there are even like big handbooks of filters which have uh, these things so if you need to design a particular type of filters you can first get the poles and so on once you have the pole locations you can uh, use the second order section to realize a filter with those poles and then cascade a bunch of them to get a higher order filter okay so that's how you do that and there's one more practical aspect that uh, we'll now discuss again kind of briefly so before that any questions up to this part what filters or anything else first let me uh, let me take the third order example that is the easiest it has a first order section okay and a second order section okay now i can cascade them either way i can first put the first order section or first put the second order section right both of them will give me exactly the same transfer function yes or no yeah so which one is there a reason to prefer one of them over the other so what could the reasons be now of course we have to put some context to this if we are talking about purely linear systems both of them are exactly the same and there is no difference at all okay now we will be realizing them with our op amp circuits okay so what do op amp circuits bring in that linear systems don't have saturation okay so in general there will be some swing limit right so there will be some uh, limit uh, for the output of the filter now each op amp has uh, like if you have a second order section it has three uh, i mean each uh, section has three op amps in it but let's forget that let's assume that the output of each section the output of either h1 or h2 is limited to some vsat okay plus minus vsat so in this case is there some preference ha huh? what's that yeah which one first first order why so basically if you the way to visualize this is let's say you do an experiment with sinusoids from 0 uh, to some very high frequency well into the stop band okay and then see when it's uh, when it saturates right when the if the op amp output saturates if that is the case then you have to go on reducing it okay you have to go on reducing the input amplitude and you have to choose that input amplitude which just saturates and this is not at one frequency this is over all frequencies and then say that that is the saturation limit of the filter okay so you have to spec 
the input you have to say that the input has to be below this ok. So, now clearly if you put the second order one first what happens is at this point you have the highest amplitude highest uh, magnitude and that is greater than 1 ok. So, the input that you can apply will be so let us say this is 1 plus some alpha what is the input that you can apply it is this V sat divided by 1 plus alpha ok and you have to say that the input peak has to be less than this right is not it. So, on the other hand if you have h 1 and h 2 the response from you now you have to look at not the individual responses the response from the input to this one and input to that one. So, the first one will be like this which never goes above 1 and next one will be like that which also does not go above 1. So, what is the input that you can apply here V side itself right. So, there is some uh, sense in uh, choosing this particular order ok. So, if you have the same V sat for every section having the low I mean this I have shown for a third order case what do you guess is the solution for a higher order case. So, let us say I have sixth order and I have three pole pairs. So, what Huh? Yeah, the lowest q, the lowest quality factor uh, pole pairs should come first. So, you should uh, cascade them in increasing order of q because the highest q ones will peak the most, right. So, what happens if you cascade them in increasing order of q is the lower q sections would have already attenuated something at the peaking frequency of the high q section, ok. So, you will have a better uh, optimum that way, ok. This of course, assumes that uh, the outputs are limited to the saturation voltage V sat. I mean all outputs are limited to the same value right. No, no, we assume that uh, the cascade connection does not uh, uh, affect individual transfer functions right and that is by and large true if you make them with op amps. Is that what you are concerned with? Ah, you are talking about ok. See, so far as far in the context of filters we have not talked about the frequency limitation of the op amp itself. The op amp itself was ideal right. So, uh, that is a separate issue, but there, uh, but I mean the, the problems in the tutorial were also somewhat different. What it said was that uh, if you cascade a number of uh, uh, amplifiers where the op amp has a frequency limitation, the overall bandwidth is smaller than if you use fewer stages. Here we do not have the option of using fewer stages right, we will always have both H 1 and H 2, it is only a question of whether we put this before or after. So, that effect will be the by and large the same. The only thing is first of all you have to while designing the filter you have to make sure that the effect of the op amps finite bandwidth is taken into account because that can affect the filter response in a very severe way ok. So, I will not uh, we just do not have time to discuss that because if you start discussing it it will take uh, quite a while. So, let us say you make a high order maximally flat filter assuming that the op amps had infinite unity gain frequency. Now, they do have a finite unity gain frequency 
and how much it affects it depends on how far the unity gain frequency is from the natural frequency of the filter times the quality factor it turns out you just take it as a result. So, if you get uh, if the unity gain frequency of the op amp is too small you will get something like this you will end up with stuff like that. So, that has to be incorporated while designing the filter itself, but after that we will have both sections anyway. So, that does not affect it too much the ordering does not affect that too much. So, increasing order of q obviously means if you do have a first order section you put the first order section first. Okay. Any questions here? And this, uh, yeah, this is a commonly used uh, ordering. So we can wrap up with a couple of more uh, simpler topics. One is, I mean, we realized. Uh, by the way, this type of uh, filters which use op amp integrators, this is also known as active RC filter. Okay. Basically, the filter that we just now discussed, it's known as an active RC filter. That's all. It's some historical terminology. That you go to textbooks, you will see this uh, quite often. Now, there is another way of doing the same thing. Uh, what we did was to start from the equations of this filter, right? We say that I L is. we also made V C to be okay. and we realize these integrators using op amps with capacitor and feedback and so on. Oh by the way one thing I must have I think you should have realized by now that uh, while the integrator itself does not have D C negative feedback this whole circuit around every op amp there is D C negative feedback right because of the this loop this integrator also has local feedback this one does not, but uh, this feedback works for DC. Now, how else can we make an integrator? One of the ways is also to use a voltage controlled current source. So, if this is V x, this is G m times V x, you pass this through a capacitor, what is the voltage? What is the voltage you get here? Huh? G m G m divided by C times V x right. G m V x is the current that is flowing here, the voltage is the integral of that. So, you can clearly use structures like this and if I want to have a sum of uh, linear combination of inputs what should I do? with this technique. You understand? I mean capacitor integrates the current. So, I convert the voltage to a current using a transconductor using a voltage control current source and uh, pass the current through a capacitor that is all. This is actually even simpler than the other case. If I want a linear combination what should I do? I just can connect these current sources in parallel. Okay. So, if I have and so on. I am not showing V 1 and V 2, but anyway you understand this. This voltage will be G m 1 by S c times V 1 plus G m 2 by S c times V 2 and so on. Okay. So, clearly we can do that here also right. Okay. How many capacitors will we need? 
to realize those two equations. Huh? How many capacitors do we need? How many integrations do we have? Two. And it is a second order filter, right? So, you do need So, let me call the C 1 and C 2 for now and the voltage across this represents V C, the voltage across this represents what? What is the other state variable? I L R, I L times R. Okay. What should be the current flowing in C 1? What all should it depend on? Huh? What is that? It should depend on the input voltage first. There is a term proportional to the input, it is only this the, in the term inside that matters, right? Okay. Okay. And there is a term proportional to minus V C. Okay. So, I need to have some other G m which is controlled by this V C okay. and what else do I need and another G m controlled by minus I L R itself. What is that equivalent to? This is some other G m prime times I L R. What is that? Hmm? So, the controlled current is across the controlling voltage. So, what is it? It is a resistor. Okay. This is a resistor of uh, value 1 by G m prime. You can also leave it as a control source. Okay. So, that is it. This had uh, three terms where I incorporated all three and what about uh, this one? The current through C 2. It is proportional to I L R, right? So, you just need that, okay. So, this is I will put G M, but it could be some other uh, I mean some other value, okay. So, what we have implemented is exactly the same set of equations using voltage controlled current sources and capacitors. Okay. And this type of uh, filter is known as GMC filter. So, let us say this has a resistance R q which is 1 by G q and this is G m times V c, this goes into a capacitor. In fact, let me call it V 2 because now V c and I l do not have any significance anymore. So, this is V 1, this is V 2. Okay. So, that is all the circuit, it looks a little weird. How is this integrator stable? This uh, we have a control current source just going into a capacitor. Okay. 
will this voltage not blow up or something? Huh? V 1? Yeah. So, what happens is there is actually a feedback, I mean this is uh, uh, there is no wire connection, but there is feedback through this GM. Okay. So, there is DC negative feedback around both these integrators also exactly as before. Okay. So, please calculate uh, V 1 by V i and V 2 by V i, you can do this before the next class. And also if I look at the combination of these elements, I have C 1 and C 2. So, I have this structure right, I have combined this control source, this control source and the capacitor. Okay. The combination of these three I have drawn here. So, you have V 1 and you have G m times V 1 feeding into C 2. So, that gives you V 2 and that V 2 is controlling this. Okay. So, please find the equivalent looking from here. Okay. So, this you should be able to do now and we can wrap up. Yeah. So, you will find that what is the equivalent uh, component that you get? Does it look like any component that you know? It is an inductor essentially Z in will be S c by G m square. So, by essentially what has happened is you have transposed the voltage and current. A capacitor integrates the current to give you a voltage. Okay. So, first you took the input voltage transformed it into this current integrated that and that voltage you transformed back into this current. So, I V relationship became the V I relationship and a capacitor turned it to an inductor. Okay. And again I mean like in the other case, in the other case it was not an inductor, it was a two port. In this case it is actually a one port and it is exactly like the combination of these three is in fact like connecting an inductor of value C by G m square here. Okay. So, again you can see a parallel resonance circuit with C 1, this uh, C 2 by G m square and this resistor. Okay. And that should also tell you what V 1 should come out to be. Okay. Any questions about this? So, this structure If this is V 1, this is V 2, this one is G m V 2, this is G m V 1. It just consists of two control sources with opposite polarities, right? One is drawing current, the other one is pushing current. So, this is known as a gyrator. Okay. So, if you 
connect a capacitor on this side from this side what do you see huh? inductor and if you connect a connect an inductor on this side what do you think you will see on this side capacitor and if you connect a resistor resistor if you connect a capacitor and inductor capacitor and resistor in parallel inductor and resistor in in series yeah so it basically inverts the vi relationship okay so it's quite a useful block and it's part of every active filter in one way or another okay so in general if you have an impedance z what will you get what will you get yeah what is it what's the expression huh gm square by z z by gm square Z O one by S. I think this is a wild answer. <laughs> no, just calculate it, right? You will get G M V one here. The voltage across this is G M Z V one. The current through this is G M square times Z times V one. So the voltage divided by current is what? One by G M square Z. Okay. So you'll get the reciprocal of Z, but of course with the correct scaling factors. That has dimensions, uh, and you have this GM square, which is the GM of gyration. Okay. So that's how, if you have a capacitor here, you would get an inductor, and vice versa. Okay. So this is known as GMC filter. Please evaluate the transfer functions. Okay, and you can also think about this. Right. So, we will uh, stop there for now.